Next news, churches burn as Canada laments the discovery of unmarked native graves. In the past few weeks, fires destroyed four Catholic churches on indigenous land in Canada. The churches were destroyed right after the recent discoveries of hundreds of human remains at the sites of two former boarding schools, which Catholic religious groups operated. On June 26th, the St. Anne's Catholic Church on Upper Similkameen Indian Band Land was set aflame. There were two other fires taking place in, in the southern Okanagan region on June 20, uh, 21st. Both churches, the Sacred Heart Church and St. Gregory's Church, were burned to the ground, and investigators described the fires as suspicious. So I wanted to talk about this because this obviously, well, not obviously, um, given the fact that these churches were on indigenous land, given the climate of Canada, over the discoveries of almost a thousand unmarked graves at the sites of these two residential schools. Um, a lot of people are speculating that these are arsons that occurred because of anger and animus towards the Catholic church, given the outrage over these recent findings. Um, but I also wanted to talk about it because I've seen, um, ex-Catholics actually specifically celebrate this. Um, and that's not something that we like here at Atheist Republic. Um, and so I thought that this gives us an excellent opportunity to talk about why this is something that we oppose. I mean, if you need an explanation, then I, like if people like, why is this bad? Like, I don't even know if we could yeah, can we explain to people why destroying other people's property is bad? Like, can we? Do we need to? Do we need to have that talk? Is that like? Is that the level we are at here right now? <laughs> like, I mean, honestly, I think it's important. Mm. Uh, like, seriously, because the, one of the persons I saw um, celebrating this was Nurgle, that Polish blaspheming death metal artist that we love, and we've covered his work on in on his Instagram. He was like posting photos of this basically like encouraging it and i was shocked and i was horrified i was like this is a huge figure especially in polish secular activism and this is the message he's putting out there like someone who's much older than me like i think it is important to talk about why th this isn't right <laughs> rivka um i don't know if this was his motivation the polish uh, music artist or other people who have celebrated. But the first thing I thought of when I saw this and you talked about people, it reminded me of the burning churches is a big feature in a lot of Scandinavian metal. And it's so it, and whether they're for real or not, because, and some of them have been, some people have burned down churches in Scandinavia, but it's a huge feature of that you know, so I don't know if he was encouraging it or he was just like, oh, it's he's a metal uh, heavy musician. This is associated with heavy music in a lot of places. But I think the association is almost a positive one, too, like, you know, cleansing, which I don't agree with either that, you know, if it's against the law, someone can get hurt unintended consequences, all kinds of things, and it doesn't belong to you, and it's not going to change the situation. That it happened is in going the to past. change the situation in their favor, actually. Right. Yeah, in the past. I'm talking about it's not going to make those bad things not have happened. Oh, okay, okay. You know, guess, so. so. But Armin I, is saying that this is actually going to play in the hands of the Catholic Church. Oh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But I meant, you know, if it's a vengeance type thing, right. yes, the anger may be very justified, but doing this isn't going to give you what you yep. want, so to speak. Yeah. So just to be clear, we don't know exactly what, who did this and what the motivation is, right? Um, what we do know is that the fact that there are some people who seem to be cheering this 
like celebrating this, right? That part we know for sure, right? Whatever, whoever did this and whatever the motivation was, right? Um, it's sometimes I feel like not mentioning the fact that this actually helps the Catholic Church because the religion just feeds on victimization, right? This is like such a save for the Catholic Church right now. They're like, oh my God, we look horrible. I hope something something bad happens to us so we, we could be like, be the oppressee rather than the oppress look like the oppressee rather than the oppressors, right? Like religion needs to always feel like it's being attacked to be like, oh, we're, the world is after us. This is why we need religion and blah, blah. So this really much, this very much feeds into you know, helping religion grow and find people uh, who actually are on the side of oppressors actually feel like that, no, they are the victims, right? But the reason why I'm hesitant to mention this is because to me, it sounds like I'm suggesting that you shouldn't do this because it helps religion, okay? But that's like maybe reason number, I don't know, 36? Because the reason number one is you're destroying someone else's property. Like that is, that should be enough for this to be considered immoral. So if I mention don't do this because it helps the Catholic church, I think it's taking attention away from the fact that burning things that don't belong to you is bad is like, should just be the main focus of attention. Suze. Yeah, so I would like to emphasize again, at this point, officials have not released like, I don't, it's been a few days. I don't think they've released any, like, suspects or um, motivations for this. But it should be noted that two fires took place on June 21st, which is National Indigenous Peoples Day in Canada. So, given the climate, given this holiday that represents um, in, uh, the recognition of Native people in Canada... Like there are just too many things aligning that I I think it is very likely to be um, motivated based off of the sentiment. After these happened in indigenous communities, there was a lot of ambivalence towards this happening. Like a lot of people, they didn't, yeah, ambivalence. Um, however, I would like to say that just because it happened on these days or because of the given climate that doesn't necessarily mean that indigenous people themselves did this. Um, there are a lot of times where like radicals will take up the group of indigenous people and do stuff supposedly on their behalf when really that stereotype of who could have done this could actually end up um, hurting these groups. So we don't actually know who did this yet, um, but it's very interesting kind of, political climate that's going on right now in Canada. And I'm very interested to see how things are going to develop by the end of the year when the Pope is set to actually meet with representatives from these communities over a series of days. And then it'll cum culminate with meeting all these representatives at once. All right, highlight some comments if there are any good ones. And if Susie is not highlighting your comments, that means that your comments are not good. <laughs> <laughs> or I missed in the chat. Oh, the next news yeah. is so funny. Um, I have the next news ready. Yeah, Secular Rarity say, I understand the frustration and hurt, but it has to be channeled to the courts and laws. Or just uh, activism, just like ideas. Mm -hmm. and hey, guys, if you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Cali, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.